Images are everywhere on computers. Some are obvious, like photos on web pages and icons on buttons. Even a font is a collection of images of characters. Let's look at this example of a frog. We can see that the image is clear and of good quality. But what happens when we zoom in on the picture? When examining images, if you zoom in, you'll start to see that the blocks begin to appear. The number of small blocks in combination are called the resolution. If we keep zooming, we can see the blocks get larger and larger. A tiny piece of the picture, or a coloured block, is called a picture element, commonly referred to as a pixel. This pixel describes this little piece of information of the picture. If we had, say, 100 pixels by 100 pixels, this would give us a total resolution of 10,000 pixels. When looking at Blockly or Scratch, you can move the characters on the screen. Sometimes these instructions are referred to as taking steps, but they are often referring to how many pixels to move. In this example, we ask the character to move 100 pixels forward. If I change the frog picture into black and white, it now has each pixel as being a shade of colour from black at one end to white at the other. One byte can represent one pixel. Here we have some examples of how you might explore image representation with students. For the younger years, we have a colour by numbers picture. So students start to colour in the pictures, realising that each piece forms a part of a whole picture. With older students, you might all research RGB, which stands for red, green and blue. These are the colours that computers use to create images. Students could explore how colouring images on computers are different to using paint. This might be something that you'd like to research after looking at this video. We also have an example here by Pixelface by the National Gallery of Art website. This is a great website for having students experiment with different resolutions. They can click on an image that they want to look at and the type of resolution, so whether they have really, really big pixels or really tiny pixels. And they can also play with colouring in these images. Students could also design their own pixelated picture for example, my picture of the chicken here, which I'm sure you could do a much better job at. Some other extensions that you might like to do or run through with students could be looking at generating images with programming tools. We have a couple of examples here, such as Khan Academy modules. We also include a link to another site where the instructor talks through how to create shapes and how to colour them in using the processing language. There are also a number of great activities on the CS Plugged website where you can explore what happens when we transfer images 